Welcome back everyone for a peering preview, Cobra Kai Season 6 Watch Party! The final season is dead ahead, and the secrets and revelations about what is to come are emerging fast. To that end, the wonderful website What's on Netflix has a special peek at what's to come. They're not a rumor, clickbait, nonsense website, it's definitely solid information. They've revealed the titles of all the episodes. Now if we combine the titles along with what we already know about the writers, we'll actually have a lot of information to work with. Right off the top, we see the title for episode 1 is To Be Determined. No, no, no. It's called Peacetime in the Valley. This makes immediate sense and bridges the beginning of season 6 with where we ended in season 5. They ended on top. Cobra Kai was defeated. It's even in the paper. They won. Well, what happens after you win a war? You have peace. That is what is coming, peace. Well, at least a little bit. Remember what Kreese said. This isn't war. Sure it is. War never ends. Peace is just the lull between battles. So maybe the better title is The Lull in the Valley. Now, we know from the previous tease they picked the dojo name in this episode. I tend to think the first episode will be about the celebrity of the Sakai Taikai. I now think this lineup could be for a photo op for the paper, or somehow discussing and considering what is coming in the Sakai Taikai. I suspect Johnny will be moving forward with the wedding plans and getting ready for the baby. We don't have much of this in the trailer, but it's definitely that sort of thing that's going to be going on in the background, amongst the other chaos. Now, there's a lot more we can deduce from the writer of the episode. The first episode is written by Bob Dearden. We knew that. Now, Bob joined the team in Season 3 and has exclusively written Episodes 5 and 10 since then. John, Josh, and Hayden love his ability to write those big, climactic episodes. They even had him write the finale for Obliterated as well. So having Bob instead write the season opener is a bit of a switch. What's going on? Clearly the episode may be called Peacetime in the Valley, but this is not peace. The lull is ending and war is coming. We have direct evidence of all this too. Last year during the strike, Billy was at a convention and gave this nugget to the fans. Just out of the gun, the scripts are insane. The fight, like, the first episode has a mega fight, me two huge mega fights, but they're really meaningful. That is certainly something worth noting. While every season kicks off with a fight, it's usually a uh, mid-level importance at most. Season 3 just had Miguel fighting in his dream. He won that, but it wasn't exactly real. Season 4 had the play fight at the new combined dojos. There were other intense fights. The original fight with Johnny is a classic, and I really love the beach fight in Season 5. But the fights in this episode will definitely be more in line with those bigger, more intense ones, rather than, well, that. I definitely think one of the fights will involve Johnny. That is mostly based on how Billy was talking about it. I am now tending to think Johnny's fight with Chosen could be Episode 1. The biggest clue is Johnny is still in his Red Eagle Fang Gi. In the later seasons, he's changed. Also, Chosen is there. He is strangely absent in the later scenes in the trailer. Something is up. Now, what they are fighting for or over is tough to say, but it definitely has meaning. I'm thinking the second fight is the fraternity fight with Kyler. I now think this college visit and Kyler is actually at the university and in the fraternity. It was never specified, but he is likely a year older than them and already graduated. That also explains why Kyler isn't in any of the dojo training scenes elsewhere in the trailer, because he's away at college. This visit brings him into the story and makes it cool. It'll definitely be a great fight. And we also know it's probably episode 1 because Hawk hasn't changed his hair yet. So that all sort of lines up. Now, moving on to episode 2. That is called The Prize. Now that seems to be a little unclear. What? What is the prize? Presumably, it would be with the Sekai Taikai. Now, we actually got some hints last year. I heard last year's winner, she did a big car commercial in Taiwan. We're gonna be insta-famous. Well, being in commercials and famous on Instagram is definitely a prize, though I think that is at most only part of it. You strongly suspect the prize may be more important over at Kim Da-un's Dojang back in Korea. It's likely she and Chris are here in episode 2, and they are discussing the prize for them and their students. It's the legacy for sure, but that was the motivation for her. What is his motivation? 
He is not in metropolitan area of Los Angeles. He can make a name for himself on the world stage. His training will take him big time in a way he never imagined. But again, what can we find out from the writers? Now, if you didn't know, Joe and Luan are my favorite writers on the show. They've been there since the beginning and have written some of the best episodes. You know who lives like that? Hookers. Yeah, yeah, but he's not that mad of a guy. You gotta give him a chance to, you, you don't know him like I do. Oh, that's hooker talk. From the starting gates, their episodes have popped. If you wanna be something other than a nerd with a scar on his lip, you gotta flip the script, okay? And of course, everyone's favorite line from season four. Sir, your dominance. <laughs> Who the hell were you? No be there. That's all from their scripts. If you look deeper, you'll see their focus is often on the major Johnny and Daniel episodes. Perhaps even more broadly, I would say their episodes mostly deal with the older cast rather than the younger cast, although obviously the younger cast is still there in part of this story. That is why I strongly suspect episode 2 will be Kreese and Kim Daun heavy. This is where we see the rebirth of Cobra Kai. Now episode 3 is called Sleeper, and this will definitely be a sleeper hit. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Right off the top, Sleeper. Can you say Pillow Fight? This is definitely episode 3 material. Consider that part 1 will start big and certainly end big. That means episode 3 has to be the breather episode. It's where they have a little comedy and the stakes aren't quite as high. At least not at first sight. So maybe there is something of a slumber party or similar. I tend to think the baby shower could be in episode 3. It sort of makes sense for all these events to be going on around the same thing. That also means Johnny's late night training session with the girls would be going on through this. Notice the conflict between them. That shows the stakes are different, like I said. It's not someone trying to kick your ass, but these are the interpersonal conflicts that are flaring up amongst the students. I tend to think sleepers could also refer to Kim Daun's Dojang back in Korea. They are the sleeper threat, the one you aren't thinking about, the one that sneaks up on you. Perhaps the end of this episode is when Daniel and Johnny learn they are still out there and will be competing in the tournament. That sort of ending would set up the final two episodes of part one nicely. The threat has woken up, so to speak. Now when we look at the writer of this episode, we have another huge clue. Matea Green. She joined the show in season two and moved to staff writer in season three. Her episodes tend to be the lighter episodes, also a little more emphasis on the comedy. This makes sense in the structure of the season as well as part one. Now that the main story has been established for the season, it's time for a slight shift in tone, a lighter tone that develops the story more broadly. Think about season four, the change in the All Valley Tournament led to all the dojos scrambling to prepare for what is ahead. It's also worth noting she wrote one of my favorite lines from season four. Mana from heaven, baby. Episode three will likely be the same. We will learn more about how the Sakai Taikai operates and the dojos will be preparing. So episode four is titled Underdogs. Oh boy, what a doozy. Well, we know one thing off the top, it's written by Chris Rafferty and he confirmed the Mike Barnes scene is in this episode. So this episode is all about Mike fucking Barnes. We know immediately he is running trials to prepare them for the Sakai Taikai, as well as eliminate who isn't ready. This is why it's certainly called underdogs. Will the underdogs have a shot? This is likely when and why we see such a fierce, determined Dimitri. Look at him. He is the pinnacle of the underdog who's almost good enough. He made the semifinals. He held his own in a fight, but he's not as good as Robbie or Miguel. But maybe, just maybe, if he works his ass off, he can impress Mike fucking Barnes and make the final cut. The odds are against him, but he's going to try. It's worth noting the same could also be said for Devin, Kenny, and Anthony. They're the newer students and not at the level of the more advanced students. They may progress, but they are still the underdogs in the elimination trials. This is where a lot of the interpersonal tensions and conflicts will likely explode. That will set up the chaotic finale of part one. Now, episode five is like the part two or continuation of episode four. If you have an underdog, what is the opposite of an underdog? That would be the overdog, or as it's titled here, the best of the best. This will likely be the longest episode of part one, and this is where shit or karate kicks will definitely fly. The immediate problem is I'm not really sure who or what is going on. 
I did think some of the forest training could be from episode five. Are they fighting someone or just training? I don't know. Do Sensei Kim students come to America? That doesn't seem likely and I don't think they are at the tournament yet. So even though we know there will definitely be a big fight and conflict, we don't yet know what's going on with it. It's possible it's a continuation of the earlier trials. First you establish who the underdogs are and then further tests determine who in the dojo is the best of the best. They're looking for the team captains that will definitely be part of it. It's all a natural progression, but I admit that alone doesn't have the dramatic tension for the part one finale. All I say is you can count on it being huge. Now there's a little more info we can gather from the writer. It is written by Michael Jonathan Smith. He has never written an episode five or any sort of climactic episode in this show, as I've mentioned. I think he got episode five here for a few reasons. First off, because he's showrunner for Twisted Metal, he was only available to write one episode. He had to get back to the writer's room for that show's season two. So it makes sense to give him a bigger, more climactic episode. Not to mention, he proved on Twisted Metal he can write a climax episode, as that show's season one finale was the best episode of the lot. It seems very clear there are major plot points and developments completely absent from the trailer and marketing. It's half of what a normal season would have been, and when you take out the big surprises, there's less to provide us with. This is why we have bigger gaps than normal, but we'll be able to fill it in as we get closer and closer. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be covering it all. Have a great day. I'll see you at the next watch party.